Right now, the whole world is hungry for something that it understands as AI, which is really AI or large language models. We are actually have customers using our products showing other customers how to do it. I mean, this is like you release a song and everyone is playing it. It's like, okay, great. We're very happy. Palantir CEO Alex Karp recently sat down for an exclusive interview on Bloomberg, unveiling key insights into the world of artificial intelligence. In this conversation, Karp provides concrete data on Palantir's plan to dominate the AI market, highlighting the surge in demand, especially from the thriving U.S. market. Excited to uncover AI secrets? Let's dive into the numbers and facts that are reshaping the landscape of artificial intelligence. And what does Palantir's data-driven future mean for the tech industry? Alex Karp said that Palantir's initial plan for AI was to just take the whole market, but he now revealed that, unlike others, Palantir has been deeply involved in AI within classified environments for the past five to seven years. They've developed systems to identify adversarial positions, creating proprietary technology to securely enhance large language models and roll them out across entire enterprises. With 20 years of experience, Karp is confident that what they're implementing now would take others four to five years to build. The demand for Palantir's AI is massive, with a large customer base and an influx of inbound calls exceeding the usual yearly count within a single month. In the US, there's a noticeable hunger for innovation, driving a need for an ability to securely map large language models, or LLMs, onto enterprises. Palantir's focus lies not in poetry writing, but in providing powerful solutions that can transform enterprises within weeks, offering improved margins and safety. When questioned about the foundational tech of Palantir's AI platform, Carp emphasized their agnosticism towards the large language model used. The core of their platform allows users to take advantage of LLM benefits, enhance them with custom algorithms, and securely implement them across their entire enterprise, providing immediate benefits. As for clients, the demand, especially in the defense sector, has significantly increased. The effectiveness of Palantir's products on the battlefield is evident, with a surge in demand that is expected to grow even larger. The unique selling proposition lies in Palantir's ability to deliver proven products that have demonstrated their impact on national security and defense use cases. The, 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 what's driving the, our demand for our product in defense is simply what, is what people have seen on the battlefield. And that's very sensitive and very classified. But the demand for that is very large. It's going to get larger. Why is it going to get larger? Because America is the best at software. Pro software that's built on a product is in high demand in defense. Why is it also in demand? Because until two years ago, everyone thought this was a joke. We were building systems over the last five years that are deadly. That Those deadly systems have changed the course of history. It's no longer madman saying this. You see it on the battlefield. CEO Alex Karp emphasized the tangible impact witnessed on the battlefield when asked about the driving force behind the demand for Palantir's product in the defense sector. Though the specifics remain classified, the demand is substantial and poised to grow even larger. Karp attributes this surge to America's prowess in software production, noting a significant shift in perception from dismissing AI as a joke to recognizing its potential for changing history. Highlighting the U.S. commercial industry's adaptability, CARP underscores clients' hunger for innovations that provide a disproportionate advantage in margins, safety, and secure utilization of LLMs. The focus is on practical outcomes rather than poetic endeavors, ensuring the technology creates a substantial and tangible difference. Transitioning to the pricing strategy, CARP's laid-back approach stems from confidence in the product's value. He draws an analogy with a social scenario, likening the pricing strategy to a casual encounter at a bar where confidence in one's worth eliminates the need for predetermined pricing. Carp believes in Pareto optimization, aiming to create significant value and allowing customers to pay a fair portion for that value. Addressing the counter-consideration of product investment, Carp emphasizes the billions already invested over two decades, securing intellectual property. The approach involves selling the IP while continually augmenting its value with additional features. Carp's hypothetical scenario of asking for $10 million with British charm highlights the challenging environment, particularly in the cloud-focused landscape, where customers seek maximum value at the lowest cost. Now, if, I, if, I, if you believe you have the best product in the world, what are you going to say? Okay, great. Let's not even have that discussion. I'll create the value. You tell me how much value you create. I, by the way, if you don't want to pay me, then I'll go to someone else who will. You can just, you can have different margins than the person will pay me. You can have a different safety profile than the people. You can have a different ability to control your whole business 
from your laptop than someone else because the other person who valued it paid me. If you don't want to pay me, great. He also addressed criticisms from the Bear Cave, a newsletter that released a negative report about Palantir, accusing the company of being an AI imposter. Carp dismisses these claims, asserting that Palantir is a profitable software company with the best products in the market. He confidently states that they will emerge victorious. Shifting to the core of Palantir's pitch, Carp delves into the intricacies of working with sensitive, classified data networks. Responding to a question about training large language models in such environments, he emphasizes the critical need for a sophisticated data model, branching, and access control. He notes that these components have been built over decades, are already integrated into their systems, and are set to roll out to current customers. Carp explains the significance of these tools in a classified environment where certain data and insights cannot be shared with LLMs. He hybrid nature of data handling necessitates a segmenting, branching architecture, a feature Palantir has proactively developed over the past decade. Ukraine was also brought up as a notable case study during the discussion. Palantir's involvement in Ukraine goes beyond just aiding in reconstruction. Carp urges skeptics to inquire about the effectiveness of their products from those directly impacted, which are the Ukrainians on the battlefield. He boldly suggests asking the Russians for an unfiltered perspective. The conversation pivots to the military landscape and the potential arms race and artificial intelligence involving major powers like the US, Russia, and China. Carp asserts that there is indeed competition and the US holds an advantage. However, he raises a critical concern about hindering progress. When he mentions getting out of our own way, Carp emphasizes the need for a shift in defense spending, allocating a small percentage towards proven battlefield-tested products rather than theoretical presentations. Carp then delves into the complexities of the ongoing debate around AI implementation in the military. He acknowledges the dangers but stresses the urgency of adopting proven architectures and products. But hey, before we continue, we want to thank you for watching this far. The long-term concern that was that came up 24 hours ago or 48 hours ago is an existential threat from AI. You you talk at Palantir about bending AI to a collective will. Well, do I, you do you share the concern no, though about an extinction yeah, level no, well, event? Th th there's a lot going on there. Are these things dangerous? Could they become potentially dangerous? Could they become yes? But but what these debates ignore is. Either we will will them or our adversaries will will them. There has been some concern recently about the long-term implications of AI, with discussions touching on the potential for an existential threat. Palantir CEO Alex Karp acknowledges the risks but highlights the importance of wielding AI responsibly, emphasizing that either we control these technologies or our adversaries will. He stresses the significance of ensuring that those who respect norms and the rule of law have control. When questioned about competition, particularly mentioning C3.AI, Carp dismisses the idea of engaging in bidding processes, asserting that the AI market is infinite. He bluntly challenges the concept of competition, suggesting that the focus should be on trying different approaches and adopting the solution that creates the most value. Regarding Bloomberg Intelligence's projection of a $1.3 trillion generative AI market by 2032, Carp expresses skepticism, noting the difficulty in measuring such a vast and evolving market. He questions the validity of expert predictions, asserting that the market will gravitate towards the most effective products over time. Furthermore, Palantir CEO Alex Karp addresses concerns raised within the NHS in the United Kingdom, acknowledging legitimate questions about data relationships. Karp emphasizes the importance of transparency, particularly outside the U.S., regarding where the data goes, how it's moved, and who has access to it. He outlines Palantir's commitment to providing robust and transparent software, which is crucial for the current AI boom. Carp points out that the transparency required for AI to function effectively aligns with Palantir's software capabilities. In the context of the NHS, he highlights the need for fair and equitable treatment, especially addressing the backlog of cases in the UK. Carp expresses confidence in Palantir's ability to demonstrate how their software works, showcasing features like transformation, branching, and ontology. He underscores the company's track record in the UK, demonstrating their product's safe and efficient use under challenging conditions. Carp concludes by emphasizing the importance of transparency in achieving the fairest, most ethical, and justified outcomes. So, now that we've delved into Palantir's AI advancements, it's clear that the company is positioned at the forefront of a dynamic and rapidly evolving market. With a proven track record in delivering effective solutions, particularly in defense and healthcare, Palantir is set to continue making significant contributions to the AI landscape. The future seems promising as Palantir's commitment to transparency, innovation, and addressing real-world challenges stands out. 
The statistics speak for themselves, with the company's success in transforming data into actionable insights evident in various sectors. As we anticipate what's next for Palantir in the AI space, one can't help but wonder how these advancements will shape industries and solve complex problems. The data-driven approach and proven results position Palantir as a key player in the AI revolution. So, how do you think Palantir's AI will continue to redefine the future of data analytics and decision-making across diverse domains? Join the conversation in the comments below, and while you're at it, make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons down below. Additionally, if you want to know about Palantir's recent deal with the UK's NHS, I highly recommend watching this amazing video. Simply click this video right here. Thank you for tuning in and stay tuned for more exciting content in the future.